Shalom. Shalom. I want to start off this video by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahusha, Bahashim Rokakudash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And grace and peace to you, elect around the four winds, believing and pushing his truth in all sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your houses. This is your fellow servant, Rokal from the GMS Orlando camp. And tonight's session is going to be entitled Temperance. All right, Temperance and Discipline. And uh, tonight's session is going to be real brief through the spirit. Lord willing, this is edifying and exhorting unto you, elect Akim and Akwaf out there. On the importance of temperance. All right, the importance of temperance and bringing ourselves under a discipline. All right, or rather, the discipline of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai in order to fulfill our purpose as vessels of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right, and tonight's lesson is inspired by a live stream I was watching earlier today from the beloved elder from Mississippi, who's, um, whose name is escaping me right now. But nevertheless, his channel name is Spirit Wind Judah. All right. And uh, he was doing a live walk and talk with the Warriors from New Orleans. And uh, one of the topics, one of the topics that they touched on tonight was the constant battle in the flesh. You know, the constant battle against our different demons and the importance of discipline, you know, which is the topic that me and I can touch real briefly at camp this past Saturday. But uh, nevertheless, I want to expound on it through the spirit. You know, Lord, this is this is edifying. All right, because discipline is one of the key factors in this truth of ours. All right, discipline. All right, because discipline allows us to subdue the flesh, which in turn allows our spirit to flourish. All right, and just as the scriptures say, the just shall live by faith. All right, so we want our spirit to flourish in these latter days. All right, and the only way to accomplish that is by subduing the flesh to the best of our capability, which comes through temperance, which comes through discipline. Let's get this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25. It reads, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. All right, now let's get this word for temperate in the blue letter. All right, it's worth a temperate in the blue letter. Strong's G, one four six seven. It reads, "To exercise self-restraint, to contain, to be self-controlled, content, to exhibit self-government." All right, and in our strivings for the masteries, all right, in our strivings to subdue the flesh, it's important that we possess some level of self-government. All right, we have to act as our own checks and balance system. All right, because the first one to know whether or not you're going off should be you. Because who knows you better than yourself, right? And we all know the different demons that we face on a daily basis. All right, each and every brother has his own demons. The brothers are going into it and they, and they uh, walk and talk. You know, every brother has their demons that they face. All right, and if you believe that you don't, then that's a very dangerous mind state to be in. That's just like going into a war thinking that you have no enemies. You might as well prepare to lose because you're going into that battle ill prepared and ready to be taken over. But as long as you're able to pinpoint your different weaknesses, all right, as long as you're able to pinpoint that enemy, which is our flesh, all right, and which is, you know, whatever demon that you face, then the more suitable, the more prepared we are for this battle. And the way that we pinpoint our different weaknesses is through self-examination. All right, that's that's the first step to to this temperate, uh, to being temperate, to being uh, to being able to self-govern ourselves. All right, is to be to be able to examine ourselves. Let's get this in our let's get that in Second Corinthians thirteen and verse five. It reads, "Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves." Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shah Mashiach is in you, except you be reprobates. All right, and, and the beautiful thing about this truth is that it's given us the capability to examine ourselves. It's given us the capability to hold ourselves accountable, to pinpoint our different weaknesses, all right, 
through the spirit and not only pinpoint them all right but attack them through the spirit and power you have by shimia was shot weaken them all right this truth has given us the ability to examine ourselves truly all right put ourselves truly under a microscope all right because in the world we weren't taught these type of these type of characteristics we weren't taught this 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 type of mind state we weren't taught to examine ourselves. We weren't taught to hold ourselves accountable. We weren't taught to, uh, you know, pinpoint weaknesses and attack them. We were taught to just let them ride. But through the spirit, man, the Lord has given us the ability to examine ourselves. And that comes that the first to be able to do that. First, let's get this because it, it, it's a mentality that has to be possessed uh, a certain mentality that you have to possess in order to to, to examine yourself, in order to self-govern yourself. And that's why the scriptures tell us to do this in Romans, the 12th chapter. In the second verse, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Heavenly Father. All right. And in order to self-govern ourselves in that, that first step, all right, in order to take that first step to self-government, which is self-examination, all right, we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And how do we do that? By returning back unto the scriptures, because the scriptures give us a standard to judge by, to examine by. They give us that standard or that baseline to judge whether or not we're going too far to the left or too far to the right. It gives us that balance point, which we know the Lord, uh, the Lord loves a balance. The Lord loves a good balance. And balance is essential to, to, to life. <laughs> Everything has a balance. So the first step to that is being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we renew our minds daily by staying occupied in these proxies, by staying occupied in the word, by studying to show ourselves approved, by doing our due diligence. This is how we renew our mind constantly. All right, this is how we transform our mind from the mentality of the world into the mindset of the heavens, to the mindset of the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son. You know, but let's get this again. In 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Yahweh Shah Mashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. All right, and the Lord is in us. All right, it's evident that the Lord is in us. Lord willing, we be of the elect. But it's evident that the Lord is in us. Otherwise, we wouldn't have received this truth. But upon receiving this truth, it's important that we constantly examine ourselves whether or not we be in the faith, whether or not. We're upholding that standard that the Lord gave us. All right, which is a part of temperance, which is a part of self-government, which is temperance, all right, which is discipline. All right, which is important for this walk of ours, because this battle of the flesh is constant. The battle of the mind is constant. And without these tools. Coupled with faith. Our chiefly faith We're easily overtaken We can be easily overtaken Alright let's grab this one again In uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 25 It says And every man that striveth for the mastery Is temperate in all things Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown But we an incorruptible Alright and You know you have these different people of the world Who bring themselves under a certain discipline in order to receive an, a, a, corruptible, a corruptible crown. You know, you have your different martial, art, martial artists, all right, different athletes, different entertainers, all right, who subject themselves to strict disciplines, all right, in order to receive a corruptible reward. But through the Spirit, the Lord has given us, or the Lord has allowed us to bring us under His discipline to receive that everlasting everlasting reward, which is the fruit of the kingdom, all right, which is Yahweh Shah's dominion and the commonwealth of Israel, along with the promises that were made unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. 
me get the. I just have a couple of more, then I'll close it out. All right. Uh, Shalom. Shalom. Because one of the um, one of the um, points that the brothers also made as they were talking about uh, the battle of the flesh, you know, and, and, and discipline is the fact that the Lord blesses us. <laughs> all right, to say at least, all right, the mercy of the Lord manifest all right through us being hindered from certain opportunities from us being hindered from certain uh, uh ventures all right because if we were allowed to pursue certain ventures and, and to pursue certain um rewards all right we'll be corrupted to say the least all right we'll self-destruct all right, to, to put it simply, the Lord saved us from ourself. <laughs> the Lord saved us from ourself. The Lord saved us from self-destructing. Because each and every one of us was on a, a swift path, a swift path to self-destructing. Because we had no we had no temperance. We had we had no true discipline. You know, we had no true standard. And everything that we desired in this world would have eventually led to our self-destruction. And that's why the scriptures say this in, in Sirach, or Ecclesiastes chapter 20, and uh, verse 21. It says, there is, there is that is hindered from sinning through one. And when he taketh rest, he shall not be troubled. All right, and the Lord hindered the majority of us acumen aqua, all right, from sin, all right, from destruction through one. All right, the Lord held us back from our different uh, opportunities. The Lord held us back from our different ventures because ultimately those things would have destroyed us. And that's a part of the discipline that we must uh, maintain. Understanding that certain things are not for us. All right, certain things will destroy us. And that's a part of, uh, of holding ourselves under this discipline because without it, we 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 seek after it, you know. We'll seek after it, which will feed the flesh and deteriorate the spirit. You know, Lord willing, the, the message is getting across. <laughs> uh, let me get this last one. Sirach or Ecclesiastes twenty three. We we'll start at verse one. The point is in six. It says, "O Lord, Father and Governor of all, my whole life, leave me not to their counsels, and let me not fall by them." Who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my heart that they spare me not for my not for my ignorances and it pass not by my sins. All right, and the Lord set scourges over each and every one of our thoughts. All right. In order to keep us in order, in order to keep us temperate. It says. O Lord, Father, and God of my life, give me not a proud look, but turn away from thy servants. Always a haughty mind. Turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscences. And thou shalt hold him that his desire is always to serve thee. And the Lord turned us away from vain hope and con concupiscences. All right, let's get to the word from concupiscence. Let's see. Let's look this up. Concupiscence, the definition is strong sexual desire, lust, all right, lust, so let's go back, turn away from me vain hopes and lust, and thou shalt hold him that is desire, that is desirous always to serve thee, let not the greediness of the belly nor the lust of the flesh take hold of me, and give not over Get and give not over me, thy servant, into an impudent mind. 
all right and the lord and, and the lord didn't give us over the greediness of the belly all right the lust of the flesh all right ultimately the lord brought us into this temperance the lord brought us into his discipline all right by restoring this truth back unto us through the spirit of power yahweh by shimei was shy and it's on us it's our, a part of our duty a part of our purpose is to uphold this discipline all right is to uphold this temperance all right and magnify and and and, and, and uh pers pursue it until the end all right persevering it until the end all right it's very important that we that we possess temperance and discipline all right it's an essential part of our walk all right without discipline we cannot subdue the flesh without discipline we can't we can't check ourselves we can't uh, examine ourselves you know we can't exhibit the true fruits of the spirit you know with that being said that's all i had to say a little one is that if i need to elect shallow one stay up